Few areas in the world are as steeped in myths and legends as the Bermuda Triangle. Dozens of ships and airplanes have disappeared around the area within the triangle, some of which surrounded by unexplained circumstances. One such ship was the USS Cyclops, the biggest ship in the US Navy, which vanished without a trace in March 1918. The USS Cyclops was the second of four Proteus-class colliers built for the United States Navy. The ship launched on May 7, 1910 and was the Navy's biggest and fastest fuel ship at about 540 feet long and 65 feet wide. The Cyclops would be placed in service on November 7, 1910, and since her launch, she would travel between the Baltic Sea, the Caribbean, and Mexico. After the declaration of war by the US Congress in April 1917, the Cyclops was commissioned on May 1st that same year with Lieutenant Commander G.W. Worley in command. She would join a convoy for Saint Nazaire in France in June 1917 and returned to the East Coast in July. As this was wartime, she was outfitted with 50 caliber guns and except for a voyage to Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, she would mainly serve along the East Coast. But then, in early 1918, the Cyclops would be tasked with transporting bulk cargo between the United States and Brazil. On January 9, 1918, she was assigned to the Naval Overseas Transportation Service. The day before, January 8, she had departed Norfolk with 9,960 tons of coal for the English ships that were stationed in the South Atlantic. She arrived at Rio de Janeiro on January 28, 1918. After loading up 10,800 long tons of manganese ore that would be used for munitions, the ship would depart Rio. This load was reportedly a lot more than her maximum capacity, which was 8,000 long tons. Before leaving port, Commander Worley had reported that the starboard engine had a cracked cylinder and wasn't working. A survey board would confirm this report and they recommended that the ship return to the United States right away. The Cyclops would depart Rio on the 15th of February. On the 20th of February, the Cyclops entered Bahia and two days later she departed for Baltimore, Maryland, with no scheduled stops in between but the Cyclops would make an unscheduled stop in Barbados on March 3rd, 1918. It's believed that this stop was because the water level was over the Plimsoll line, which is the line where the hull of a ship meets the surface of the water. If this is accurate, then the ship was overloaded. However, investigations in Rio showed that the ship had been loaded and secured properly. In any case, after her unscheduled stop in Barbados, the Cyclops would depart Barbados for Baltimore, which was roughly 1,800 nautical miles away on March 4th. The alleged last known message from the ship was a simple one. Weather fair, all well. The ship and its crew of 360 was never seen again. No distress call, no lifeboats found adrift at sea, no wreckage, nothing. What happened to the USS Cyclops has been a source of debate for more than a century now, and we still don't have all the answers. Some have pointed fingers at the captain, Worley. One such person is an officer named Conrad A. Nervig, who wrote an article for the U.S. Naval Institute proceedings in 1969. 
He had been transferred off the Cyclops in Rio and according to him, there were a lot of problems with the ship and her crew. He described Captain Worley as a gruff, eccentric, salt of the old school who was a very indifferent seaman and a poor, overly cautious navigator. He also wrote that Worley was genuinely disliked by both his officers and his men. For instance, he recounted an incident where one of the engines was turned over while a sailor was nearby. The force of the propeller drew in the boat and knocked the sailor overboard and he drowned. This tragedy was blamed on a captain who created a quote, thoroughly demoralized and disorganized crew because of his quote, irrational methods of command. There were even some rumors that some members of the crew had claimed Worley was a drunk and unsuitable to steer a ship some months prior to the ship's disappearance. And some even theorized that a minor mutiny was staged on board the ship. These sentiments would only get stronger after investigations by the Office of Naval Intelligence revealed that Captain Worley was born Johann Frederick Wischmann in Sandstedt, Hanover, Germany in 1862. He had reportedly entered America by jumping ship in San Francisco in 1878. By 1898 he had changed his name to Worley. At that time, he owned and operated a saloon in San Francisco's Barbary Coast. During this time, he had commanded several civilian merchant ships, picking up and delivering cargo from the Far East to San Francisco. And like Nervik had claimed about the Cyclops, the crews of these ships were not exactly fond of the man. They reported that he would berate his crew and punish them for even the slightest offense. Worley was commissioned as a lieutenant commander in the Naval Auxiliary Reserve on the 21st of February 1917, and his behavior allegedly did not change. Like on the merchant ships before, he would berate men for minor offenses, and allegedly he would even get violent. One report even claimed that he had chased an ensign about the ship with a pistol. But the most serious accusations against Worley was that he was pro-German in wartime, which was only spurred on by the revelation that he was born in Germany. There's also been some speculation that the Cyclops had many German sympathizers on board. For instance, one of the passengers on the Cyclops' final voyage was a man named Alfred Louis Moreau Gottschalk, who was the consul general in Rio de Janeiro with pro-German sympathies, which he was hated for. This detail has led to some theories that speculate that Gottschalk and Worley may have been planning to hand over the ship to the Germans. But there's also other theories that put the blame on the Germans, though in a different way saying that the ship may have been attacked and sunk by a German submarine. After the end of the war, German records were checked to see if there was any mention of the USS Cyclops, if it had been acquired by the Germans, as the rumors said, or even if it had been sunk by a submarine, as other theories suggested. But nothing was found in these records. Because the ship reportedly was lost in the Bermuda Triangle, another layer to the ship's disappearance gets added, which I should mention. Also known as the Devil's Triangle, the Bermuda Triangle spans across the western part of the North Atlantic Ocean. It is an infamous area of the world with many legends surrounding it. For centuries, the Triangle have captured human imagination with unexplained disappearances. Ships, planes and people have all vanished without a trace inside the Triangle. And other mysteries also supposedly happens within the Triangle. The stories of the Triangle's mysterious behaviors date back to the time of Christopher Columbus when he reportedly saw a flame of fire possibly a meteor, crashing into the sea during his first voyage to the New World. 
He also reported that a strange light appeared in the distance a few weeks later, also within the triangle. This of course leads to many other theories. The triangle's strange behaviors and the disappearances that supposedly occur within it has led to many theories. And if a ship like the Cyclops disappear within that triangle, many of those theories will be attached to the ship as well. And the USS Cyclops have many theories surrounding it. Some simple ones like pro-German sympathies and conspiracies with the Germans or a German submarine sinking the ship. But there's also other theories such as the manganese ore exploding or more fantastical theories such as a sea monster of some kind rising up from the depths, attacking it and dragging it down to the depths below. There's also been some speculation that say that the reason we haven't found the Cyclops yet is because extraterrestrials are the ones responsible for the disappearance. There's also people who have speculated that the Bermuda Triangle and the disappearance of the Cyclops have a connection with the lost city of Atlantis. Another theory regarding the Bermuda Triangle is something called vile vortices. In my video on the Alaska Triangle, I spoke briefly on this topic. The term vile vortices was coined by cryptozoologist Ivan T. Sanderson who claimed that there are 12 of these vortexes situated along particular lines of latitude around the Earth. And the most famous one is the Bermuda Triangle. The reason these vortexes are called vile is allegedly because the natural electromagnetic fields of the planet are stronger in these parts than anywhere else in the world which means that these areas are more likely to be home to unexplained disappearances and other mysterious phenomena. As I mentioned, there are more simple explanations for the strangest of the triangle. These explanations are more grounded in science and they say that environmental factors would explain many, if not most, of the disappearances within the triangle. Environmental factors such as tropical storms and hurricanes, rapid and violent changes in weather that have been known to occur in the area. Another possible environmental explanation for some of these disappearances could be the presence of large fields of natural gases on the continental shelves. Studies have found that bubbles caused by these gases can in fact swallow a ship. So the theory is that methane eruptions might produce regions of frothy water that are no longer capable of providing adequate buoyancy for the ship that is unfortunate enough to be caught in that eruption. Which means that if something like that happens where a ship is located, the ship would sink very quickly and without warning, given the appearance of there one minute, gone the next. Another common problem within the triangle is problems with the compass. It has been known for centuries that compasses have natural magnetic variations in relation to the magnetic poles. True north is the northern axis of rotation of the Earth, and magnetic north is the point on the Earth's surface where its magnetic fields point directly downwards. These two don't always exactly coincide with each other and the location changes over time, which means that when traveling through an area where this might occur, the compass will appear to change and not function as it should. As I said, there are so many theories about the triangle and so many theories regarding the Cyclops. The ocean has always been a source of mystery and dread, and stories of disappearing ships have always been part of that mystery. Especially with ships like the USS Cyclops that have disappeared without as much as a distress call, and that still haven't been found. As far as the US Navy and the US Coast Guard are concerned, there are no supernatural explanations for any of these disappearances or even disasters. 
most of these events have been determined to have been caused by the combined forces of nature and human error. This includes the Cyclops. The common belief is that mechanical failures, human error, and a force of nature such as a big wave or gases erupting is to blame for the ship disappearing. With undersea technology improving constantly, more and more vessels that were believed to be gone for good have now been found. So, while we may never truly know what caused the Cyclops to sink, the hope is that we will find the final resting place of the USS Cyclops and its crew.